Don't do it, Batwoman writers. Don't do it. I bet you thought you were being really f***ing clever with that cliffhanger, didn't you? Hey, let's throw out a tease of a big Batman villain from the comics possibly showing up. That'll get fans excited. Don't you dare bring the Scarecrow into this. You already turned Tommy Elliot into a f***ing joke, but if you take one of my favorite Batman villains and subject him to this trash fire, well... <laughs> given your viewership, you may think you have nothing left to lose at this point, but if there's any aspect of this shit show that I haven't torn to shreds yet, believe me, I'll find it. Hit the intro and let's do this. Episode 14, Grinning Ear to Ear, begins with a flashback to 2011, where some girl is looking at her reflection in the mirror and doesn't like what she sees. The reflection becomes comically distorted like a funhouse mirror. I guess that's how she views herself or something. So she smashes the mirror and goes to town on her face with a shard of broken glass. I have to assume that she knows what show she's on, and she thought that carving up her face like the Joker in The Dark Knight would be a less painful experience. You want to know how I got these scars? I thought they'd get me out of appearing in an episode of Batwoman. I regret nothing. Back in the present, we cut back and forth between Sophie and Kate, who is cosplaying as a 12-year-old boy this week, and both of them are in a really good mood this morning. Kate, because she made out with Sophie the criminal, and Sophie because she made out with Batwoman the criminal enabler. Our heroes, everyone! Sophie runs into Mary and tells her what happened in the last episode. Mary wonders if Sophie knows who Batwoman is, and she doesn't, but this is something that's been on Mary's mind recently. Then Sophie gets a text from Batwoman, who wants to see her tonight for some TV PG HLA. Oh, I can hardly contain my excitement. The only sane person in either of these scenes is Luke, who thinks that Kate being with Sophie as Batwoman is a bad idea, and rightly points out that if people found out about this, it would put a target on Sophie's back. But since Kate is the worst person in the world, she doesn't give a shit about that. Thankfully, we then get away from Kate and cut to a much more likable and sympathetic character, the villain of the show. Alice is reading Beth's obituary in the newspaper, and she's none too happy about it. I find it weird that Alice was identified as a Jane Doe instead of her real name, Beth Kane, but that's hardly the stupidest thing that'll happen this week. One of her thugs comes in with a picture of Dr. Campbell, who is Mouse's dad's everyday disguise. She can't wait to enact unspeakable horrors upon him, and the show being what it is, Batwoman will almost certainly let her get away with all of it. Cut to Crow's HQ, where Jacob is talking to a lawyer. Turns out that business with the executioner caused a number of cases to be reopened and transferred to a different judge. And since Jacob knows this judge, the lawyer's client... That's the guy who stopped Alice's boyfriend from killing Jacob in prison, but then left Jacob to bleed to death on the floor without calling for help, wants him to talk to the judge and get his case bumped up because he's innocent and his confession was coerced out of him. And Jacob doesn't want to play ball because this is supposedly the guy who killed Lucius Fox. But if he doesn't do this, the lawyer threatens to unearth all the crow's dirty little secrets. But that threat really means nothing. By now, we've seen the crows breaking the law out in public, making no secret of the fact that they were breaking the law. Just last episode, Sophie flat out admitted that they were breaking the law, and yet the police never bothered to do a damn thing about any of it. Pretty much since the show began, the crows have been very publicly acting as if they're allowed to break the law with complete impunity, up to and including putting kill orders on whoever they damn well please. If they were never held accountable for any of that shit before, I highly doubt they'd need to worry about any skeletons this lawyer might pull out of their closet now. But because the plot says so, Jacob is worried about it anyway. Cut to Sophie making herself look all hot before her main squeeze shows up. Batwoman lets herself in. And just for a moment, they tease that Kate might actually have listened to Luke. She says this needs to end because her enemies could use Sophie against her and Sophie could get hurt. But the moment passes... She very quickly remembers that she places no value on human life whatsoever because she is Kate freaking Kane, damn it. And so instead of putting an end to the relationship to prioritize Sophie's safety, they make out. 
But then Sophie's mom shows up to cockblock them, so Batwoman has to leave and go do boring stuff like fight crime or something. Cut to some fashion model lady at a studio somewhere. The power goes out and the girl from the flashback appears wearing a surgical mask and chases her down with a knife. Back in Bruce's office, Luke asks Kate if she ended things with Sophie, and because Kate is always skirting responsibility whenever possible, she avoids the question and changes the subject. There have been some cases recently of a psycho slashing up people's faces that Kate finds interesting. The victims are all social media influencers or something, so Kate goes to Mary for intel, as Mary is also a social media influencer because the script says so. Just go with it. Cut to the illegal underground abortion clinic. Mary just happened to know one of the victims. How convenient. She tells Kate that the victim had corrective surgery, and the only plastic surgery in Gotham worth going to is Dr. Campbell. And because Mary has always had a need for Kate to like her that borders on sociopathic, she offers to spy on Dr. Campbell, but Kate blows her off. Back at Sophie's apartment, her mom is annoyed that she wasn't told about Sophie and her husband separating, but she's really in town because Sophie got suspended from the Crows and logically worries how Sophie is going to pay the rent now. And Sophie thinks she can do this... by working with Batwoman. So is Batwoman handing out paid internships now? How the hell does that work? When the hell did Batwoman offer Sophie a job? Did I miss something here? What makes her think there's any money in this? Is Sophie an idiot? Well, stupid question, of course she is. A better question would be, are the writers idiots, or do they just think the viewers of this show are idiots? The answer, sadly, is yes. Sophie's mom hasn't been in Gotham long enough to be numb to the stupidity that permeates every single godforsaken inch of this cesspool, so she correctly reminds Sophie that Batwoman is a damn criminal who gets away with it, her words, not mine. And she's absolutely 100% right. Sophie, of course, mentions that Mom never had a problem with Batman, but that's because Batman represented values that she believes in. You know, because Batman's not gay. How the hell she knows Batman isn't gay is anyone's guess, because Batman would never have been stupid enough to reveal personal details like that to the public, but she knows somehow. I just love how the scene tries to make the viewer think the mom is acting as the voice of reason by correctly dismissing Batwoman as a criminal who skirts the law, and then instantly invalidates the mom's opinion by writing her off as an evil homophobe. Although the show does break new ground here by having a POC be the homophobic monster for a change, instead of one of those despicable white folks. The poor LGBT community. They're so persecuted even people of color think they're the worst thing since the Third Reich. When will humanity learn? WHEN?! So Sophie goes to see Batwoman and mentions that no matter how successful she becomes, she's always wondered if her mom is proud of her, and then assures Batwoman that they can keep things on the DL so her mom won't find out about their forbidden love affair. Batwoman's a little iffy about that, but she tables it for now and explains how she thinks Dr. Campbell's patients are being targeted by the slasher lady. Sophie's uncomfortable with this, since Campbell's affidavit is what cleared Jacob in his murder trial, but she'll look into it, which will require her to pretend that she's still working for the Crows. Because impersonating an officer of the law isn't illegal or anything. Wait. So Sophie goes to see Campbell, they talk for a while, and eventually arrive at the idea that the slasher is creating copycats by giving girls the same scars she has, and this points to a girl he treated years ago who had scars just like the ones the slasher inflicts, which in her case were self-inflicted. Spoiler, the slasher is Duella Dent. Oh, God. So they're reaching into Batman's rogues gallery again. Considering how Tommy Elliot was treated, I'm not optimistic that this will turn out well. Luckily, Duella Dent isn't a villain I'm terribly familiar with, so when they inevitably butcher her character, I won't know how offensive it is. I'll just know it's offensive on general principles. And this will actually be a step up. How pathetic is that? Cut to Batwoman snooping around Duella's house. She finds a potential target circled in Duella's high school yearbook, and Luke takes a picture of it using the new cowl cam he installed in the suit, which allows him to see through Batwoman's eyes. That's a pretty nifty gadget that could be incredibly useful, but because Kate's a giant asshole, she immediately gives him shit for it. 
Facial recognition doesn't turn up anything, even though they apparently have headshots of everyone in the damn city on file somehow. But that doesn't matter because Batwoman hears a noise downstairs and finds Duella's mom tied to a chair with her face gashed up. Duella attacks from behind. They fight for three or four seconds. Then Duella gets a knife on her mom, who she says forced her to be someone she's not. Someone she can't stand the sight of, goddammit! And then slashes her mom's throat. So Batwoman has to make a decision. Let an innocent person die, or let the dangerous criminal escape. From what we know about Kate, she couldn't give a rat's ass about either one, but the plot says she has to do something here, so the writers flipped a coin, and Batwoman applies pressure to the wound while Duella escapes. Cut to Alice's hideout, where she has taken an innocent person hostage. This guy is a therapist or something, and Alice wants to talk to him because she needs some help with her issues. I don't know what this guy's hourly rates are, but I doubt there's enough money in the damn world to get to the bottom of what's ailing her. Alice is feeling oddly indecisive about how to handle Mouse's dad. She's afraid that she'll kill him instantly instead of making him suffer for a long time, and, well, that would be unacceptable. But Dr. Malone thinks that this is the scared little girl in Alice talking, and what she's really afraid of is that he'll find a way to get power over her again, and he suggests that Alice find a third person to be an emotional shield when she confronts him. And Alice is going to take that a lot more literally than even I could imagine. And now that she's got the advice she needs, Alice orders her thugs to do away with Dr. Malone, because while she'd like to make this a weekly thing, sure enough, his hourly rates are just too steep. Then Alice looks over the file on Dr. Campbell again and finds a newspaper article about a 16-year-old girl who threatened Campbell with a lawsuit for performing reconstructive surgery on her without her consent. How in the blue hell would he still be allowed to practice medicine if he performed surgery without a patient's consent? Don't worry, hint never comes up. Cut to Mouse and his dad back in the basement where the dad held Alice prisoner for years. He says he killed Alice, Mouse is devastated. The dad says he's always tried to protect Mouse from the cruelty of the world, but Mouse says the only cruel thing in my world is you! Then the dad puts a breathing mask thing on Mouse and starts to gas him. God, I hate this miserable excuse for a character! He has succeeded in making Mouse more sympathetic, but that's only because I pity any poor bastard who has to share screen time with this one-dimensional walking plot device. We're 14 episodes in, by now it's pretty clear that Mouse's dad is the ultimate big bad of the season, and the writers have still not explained a single goddamn thing about him. We know he's a plastic surgeon, which means that he could have fixed Mouse's face whenever the hell he wanted but chose not to, and instead hid Mouse away from the world for years and covered up Mouse's facial scars with masks made of ass, all while posing as a different plastic surgeon under an assumed identity for some unknown reason. Why the hell did he do all this? Why would he do any of this batshit nonsense? What possible purpose could any of it have? What is his motivation? Why is he the way he is? These are questions that need to be answered in order for this character to make any kind of sense whatsoever, but the writers haven't even tried. We're more than halfway through the season, and the show's biggest antagonist is nothing but a cardboard cutout lunatic who does whatever ludicrous bullshit the plot needs him to do for no reason except that the plot needs these things to happen. Because apparently writing an actual character who does things that make sense was too much f***ing work! F*** this show! God damn it! Cut to Jacob. He's found a bank statement that says the Crows transferred $50,000 around the same time they handed Lucius Fox's supposed killer over to a cop who's been accused of coercing confessions in a whopping 21 different cases. So was that 50 grand payment to the guy for making sure the security cameras weren't working when Lucius was killed? The Crow, who I guess handled the arrest, thinks the guy they caught is guilty and that's the end of it, but Jacob thinks there's something kind of suspicious about this. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. Then Batwoman goes to see Mary, and turns out Mary magically knows who the girl in the yearbook is, and knows that she had a lot of plastic surgery done, which is why facial recognition couldn't find her. For some reason, it never once occurs to Batwoman that she just asked Mary about this exact case as Kate a little while ago, and if Mary didn't already know her secret identity, it wouldn't take a genius to figure it out after this. So, yeah, Kate is pretty dumb. 
So the girl in the yearbook owns a cosmetics company or something. Kate has Luke track down the truck they use. She finds another slasher victim in the truck. And then Sophie shows up from out of nowhere because the plot says so. And says the crows are on their way also because the plot says so. Even though, as far as the show is concerned, the crows weren't even investigating the slasher case. And I don't know why they would in the first place because they're a private security firm. But sure enough, the crows and the cops roll in. And they even brought a helicopter with a big damn spotlight for some reason. So Batwoman and Sophie jump on the bat cycle, peel rubber out of there, and narrowly escape. And I have no idea why. Why are they running away from the police and the crows? Someone please explain this to me. Batwoman is not wanted by the police. Hell, they still had the bat signal mounted on their roof last time I checked. If she's not wanted by the law, that means the crows can't do anything to her. Not when the police are right there anyway. So the only reason they'd have to run is to hide the fact that Sophie is working with Batwoman, or at least was in the same place at the same time as Batwoman. But Jacob already knew about that anyway. Even if they stuck around to talk to the crows in the GCPD, they wouldn't be revealing anything that Jacob didn't already know. So why are they running? BT dubs, the geniuses left Sophie's car at the scene of the crime. So the cops and the crows are going to know she was there anyway. So, yeah. Great job keeping your relationship a secret, dumbasses. Mary walks into the illegal underground abortion clinic and finds Alice stealing her medical supplies. And Alice points out that these medical supplies were already stolen by Mary, so finders keepers. Alice also informs Mary how she saved her life with a blood transfusion. Kate never bothered to tell Mary about that because Kate is the worst person who ever lived. Then Mary asks if Alice knows who Batwoman is. She says of course she does, and makes Mary have hurt feelings that Kate never bothered to confide in her about her secret life as Batwoman. Boo hoo! You're breaking my heart. Cut to, I guess, the chemical plant where the cosmetics are made. Duella has yearbook girl hanging over a vat of chemicals or acid or something. Apparently they were friends at one point, but Duella getting hooked on crazy pills drove a wedge between them, and now Duella resents Yearbook Girl for having plastic surgery to change her looks and getting famous for it, while Duella was locked in a padded room for having the audacity to carve up her own face with broken glass. Normally I'd point out how unbelievably asinine this is, but the episode's almost over, so... F*** it. So Duella starts to lower Yearbook Girl into the vat of chemicals and then leaves. But then Sophie confronts her and defeats her very easily while Batwoman saves Yearbook Girl, whose first concern upon being saved from taking a bath in noxious crap that would melt the skin off her bones is being desperate to know if someone got that on camera. Because nothing matters. Absolutely f***ing nothing. Afterwards, Sophie thinks her and Batwoman make a really good team, whereas Batwoman doesn't know how this relationship can work. So again, she's trying to end things between them, but not for the reasons she's supposed to. This is not about the very real and valid issues that Luke brought up at all. It's not about keeping Sophie safe. Kate still doesn't give a shit about that. As she explains, it's actually about Sophie wanting a real relationship versus a relationship that she'd have to keep a secret. And Batwoman doesn't want to be a secret. That's why she gave a giant middle finger to common sense and came out as a lesbian to the whole world on the cover of frickin' Catco magazine. So even though Kate is finally doing the right thing for once in her miserable life, she's only doing it for selfish, narcissistic, bullshit reasons! But this isn't a question Sophie can answer right now, so Batwoman leaves, and Sophie tries to pull on our heartstrings and cries. Oh, go f*** yourself. You made out twice. You were a thing for like a day and a half. You think you're the Capulets and the Montagues with this shit? Go find a normal relationship or piss off already. For Christ's sake. Then Alice walks into the chemical plant to have a chat with Duella. How the f*** did she know Duella was there?! Is the plot says so the writer's catch-all excuse for literally every goddamn thing that happens?! And she says that they were both wronged by the same man, and she's gonna get revenge for them. She just needs something from Duella first. Then the GCPD show up at the chemical plant, and they find Duella with her face cut off. Cut to Dr. Campbell's office, where Duella marches in to confront him, but it's actually Alice wearing a Duella ass mask. Is it still an ass mask if she took the skin from Duella's face? Eh, I'm counting it. So with his cover now blown, Alice knocks the asshole out and takes him hostage. 
Cut to Jacob leaving a message on Sophie's voicemail saying that the Crows have a major problem and he needs her back because in spite of all their issues, he's never questioned her integrity. Really, Jacob? Never? Not even in the last episode when you point-blank asked Sophie if she'd ever helped Batwoman, she lied about it right to your face, admitted that the Crows had been breaking the law under her command, and then proceeded to not turn herself into the authorities for all the law-breaking she'd just confessed to? Nah, f*** all that noise! Sophie's integrity is beyond reproach! So we're just smashing that retcon button until our fingers bleed because all of a sudden, Sophie is the only one who can help Jacob weed out the corruption in the crows. Without Sophie, the paragon of integrity, all hope is lost. You know, loath as I am to bring this up again, it would make things a lot simpler if instead of blatantly retconning shit that just happened, they just went back to the gay people can't be criminals thing. I mean, that would make no sense either, but at least we wouldn't have to pretend all that stuff that would put Sophie in prison if the writers had two brain cells to rub together never happened. Jacob's reasoning could just be that Sophie must have integrity because she's gay. Gay people can't not have integrity, and anyone who says otherwise is a homophobic monster. Sure, it would be stupid as hell, but at least we'd save ourselves some aggravation about the retcon. Fuck it, we're so far down the rabbit hole at this point, there's no climbing out of it now. But too bad for Jacob, Sophie's not taking his calls today. She has a talk with her mom where she finally comes clean, and she admits that she broke up with her husband because she realized that she was never in love with him in the first place. Bullshit! Are you kidding me with this? She didn't break up with her husband, he left her because he thought she was still hung up on Kate. But God forbid we make Sophie look weak, so we'll just retcon that shit too and make it so the breakup was her idea all along. Who cares if that's not what happened? It was like six episodes ago. No one's gonna remember that now. Ah! So Sophie finally tells her mom that when it comes to the penis, she swipes left, not right. The mom isn't happy, she storms out, and these boneheaded writers just don't know when to quit. Somehow. Some way. Even though Sophie has a laundry list of things to be ashamed of, including but not limited to several very serious crimes that by all rights she should be in prison for right now, the mom picks the one thing that is not on that list to be outraged over. Hey lady, your daughter turned Gotham into an illegal police state two episodes ago. Do you have any thoughts on that? Of course you don't. Mary comes to see Kate at the gay bar. They talk about how it never even occurred to Mary that Kate might judge her or rat her out to the authorities for running an illegal underground abortion clinic because she trusts Kate. And she hopes that one day, Kate will trust her too. Swipe left, Mary. For the love of God, swipe left. Cut back to Alice's hideout. She yanks the ass mask off Dr. Campbell and reveals him to be Mouse's dad. She wants to know where Mouse is, and he is really excited to tell her. And the episode ends with Mouse tied up and breathing through a tube which is hooked up to a canister of fear toxin. And Christ, I wish I could swipe left on this entire godforsaken show before it goes one second further. Put a bullet in my fucking head, this was awful! I'm a Marvel guy, I've said that before. I'm not incredibly well versed in a lot of DC characters, so I don't know how Duella Dent fares as an adaptation of a comic character, but just taking this version on our own? She sucks. A lot. There was nothing to this character at all. One paper-thin explanation about how her mom wanted her to be something she's not, whatever the hell that means, so she just went insane and started carving people up. Even for a one-off villain of the week, that is lame as hell. They didn't even try to make this a worthwhile character. And then there's all this Bullshit with people constantly forgetting things that just happened because the writers are incompetent hacks who think retcons and plot contrivances are substitutes for actual continuity and character development. They're not. Alice is already racking up a new list of atrocities since Kate let her go three times in one episode. 
Kate continues to be an absolutely loathsome character who, even when she does something right, is doing it for contemptible reasons. Gay characters are perpetually trapped in the 1800s because the writers want them to be forever victims of over-the-top intolerance and persecution, no matter how ridiculous and unrealistic it is. People just keep showing up in places because the plot demands it when there's no way they know that they need to be there or why. Kate and Sophie are both criminals whose numerous crimes are either retconned away or dismissed as the ramblings of ignorant pricks. The romance between them is still as flat as Ruby Rose's acting range. Mouse's dad is just an empty vessel the writers plug random batshit plot points into rather than an actual character. And the only person in this entire cast of schmucks who's even close to likable is the multiple murderer going around cutting people's faces off! Ah! On the plus side, I feel so freaking desolate after suffering through all this tripe that the possibility of the writers ruining the Scarecrow barely even registers now. When you've been kicked in the balls 50 times in a row, what's one more? My one consolation in all this is that viewers are abandoning this show like rats from a sinking ship. The writers can't stop the bleeding at this point, and they're not even trying to, so it's only a matter of time before it mercifully bleeds to death. But will I still have any kind of grip on my sanity left by the time that happens? Who the hell knows? If you enjoyed this Batwoman review, check out the other ones. There's a playlist on the channel. Ding that bell icon and follow me on Twitter using the link in the description so you'll always know when new videos get uploaded. Help me fend off the YouTube algorithm by liking, sharing, subscribing, and please make sure you're still subscribed because people are getting randomly unsubscribed all the time. I'll be back with more very soon. Over and out, this show.